Hi, and welcome back to a Save It For Parts tech review and sneak peek of some future video projects. Today we've got the UEV wireless network bridge and we're going to be installing this on the garage so we can get a wireless internet connection out to the garage from the house. That's going to help me with some future video projects including some satellite and radio astronomy stuff. Let's take a look at what UEV has sent. So here's our wireless bridge. We've got two units here. And each of these comes with a power over ethernet power injector. So these can use uh, DC power on an ethernet cable. We've got some mounting hardware. And we've got a couple patch cables. Now I believe this second box includes additional mounting hardware. Yeah, it looks like this is a pole mount. Some more pipe clamps. And some mounting arms. This is a sponsored review video because OA sent me this unit for testing. However, as with all my reviews, I'm going to try to be very fair and honest, show you the positives as well as the negatives, and mention any issues I have while installing or using it. So both of these units look pretty identical. Wireless signals from one will go to the other and vice versa. It's not a base station router client architecture, it's just basically a bridge to get your network signals, your wired ethernet from point A to point B across a gap where you can't run wires. So underneath this back cover we have our network jack in. We actually have both 10100 and 101000 so we can do gigabit ethernet on this. We have a 12 volt power input, so if we did not want to use power over ethernet, we could actually just plug in 12 volts to that, like from a solar panel or a battery system. And then we have a little LED display. I don't know what that does yet, we'll have to read the manual. Well, so far the manual seems pretty decent. We have a list of specifications here. So this tells us the model number, the built-in CPU, memory, etc. Um, data rate, protocols, frequency range. Uh, some of this, I'm not 100% sure on the translations of some of this, but um, yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. We've got a diagram of what's included in the package, which we've mostly figured that out already, but it's nice to know what everything is. We've got a little cheat sheet for the LED indicators and that little digital display underneath the back panel. And then our quick start guide, and this is pretty straightforward. You can set it up as a point-to-point -point bridge, you can set it up as multi-point, and it looks like you can also set it up as a wireless access point. And then we've got a few different use cases for network extensions, security cameras, various things like that. Got some information about accessing it, the default passwords, all that stuff. That LED digital indicator in the back does more than just change the channel. That indicates a couple different settings. So, for example, if you set it to uh, number one, you've got a certain IP address on both the um, source and receiver bridge and then you've got uh, specific IDs, SSIDs, and passwords and then if you set it to number two you've got a different SSID, a different IP address, different password so basically any particular setting on that digital readout changes all of the details about the network. That's kind of interesting. It definitely makes it easy if you've got a bunch of these around your property. You can have a pretty extensive network made up of multiple sets of these bridges or different bridges and multi-point network setup and each of them would have its own IP address, its own SSID, and its own password. So this is definitely made to be an expandable, extendable system. It's definitely made to scale. So a commercial property, something like a large warehouse or a large receiving yard could have a bunch of these out at different buildings. And that seems like it could work pretty well for keeping all the corners of a large complex connected together. Seems like a pretty decent manual, a few questionable translations, but all in all, pretty good. And we've got just a basic manual for our uh, mounting arms here. And again, very straightforward. You just uh, attach your little pole to something. It looks like you can attach it to a roof, to a wall, to an upright post, and then you've got a mounting bracket for your little wireless bridge units. Now these arms came with four hose clamps and the units themselves came with two more hose clamps. Now once your pole's in place, it looks like this just pops onto the pole and then it's a little awkward to do one-handed here, but then you take your hose clamp and secure it through here. You can also drill a couple screws into your wall and just hang it on the screws, but again, they've included these little arms, so I might as well use them. 
This would go a lot faster if I was using a power screwdriver. I have to say I'm not super impressed with the hose clamp situation here. It's possible I'm supposed to use two, which is why they included so many with the mounting brackets. Um, yeah, just using one definitely does not seem like the way to go. So that is not something that's mentioned in the manual. It doesn't actually tell you how to use the hose clamps for the little unit itself. For this one, it seems like you're supposed to use two hose clamps to go from a pole to your mounting arm. And we got four hose clamps, so we could definitely account for two arms, two poles. With these little guys, we only got one hose clamp unit per each of these, so I don't know if you're supposed to use two here. There are two slots. Fortunately, I already have more hose clamps, so if I need more than what they included, I'll just pull them out of my junk drawer. All right, that is much more secure. You definitely need two hose clamps per bridge unit per arm. Okay, I'm installing the unit on the door of my garage here, and I'm realizing this little plate is not useful for installing on a flat surface because it has these little ridged sections to go to a pole, and the little pieces here that fit onto the mounting bracket only go one way, so I can't use this for anything here. Fortunately, this also has screw holes, so I can just put screws directly through this part of the arm and mount it that way. Now the patch cable this came with is not long enough to reach the power adapter at the nearest outlet, but I have some ethernet cables around, so one of these should reach. We've set up the other bridge unit as the receiver out at the garage, so let's go ahead and set this one up as the sender here at the house. Currently these are both on channel 1, I'm just going to leave them there, I only have the single set so we don't need to go around messing with the channel selection. Alright, we've got the 5G network up so we're going to connect to that. Now because these are wireless bridges, they don't actually have their own DNS system, so my computer is not getting an IP address and it's not able to connect to the local IP address. Alright, so I can get online with the Wi-Fi from that UEV base unit. I'm still not able to get into its little admin page though, so I've got to play around with that a little bit more. It looks like I actually do have to manually set the IP to be in the same range as this unit. So this requires a little more network expertise. If you're not used to doing this yourself, you'll have to look up online, you know, how to go in and change your IP address. It's a little bit different on each system. So I'm still not able to connect to the admin page on this unit. I've tried rebooting the laptop, I've tried changing the settings. I've tried connecting from another computer, I've tried connecting from the wired network. I can't get into this thing's admin page, so I think we're going to push that aside for now, not worry about changing it away from the default settings, and let's just go outside, aim it at the other antenna, and see if I can get internet via these two devices out in the garage. Alright, so we've got our test set up at the back porch, aimed at the garage. Now this laptop's pretty new, but it does still have this weird ethernet jack, if I can figure out how to connect this. So we've got Wi-Fi turned off, but we are plugged into the B unit out here at the garage. And it says our wired network is connecting. All right, it says it's connected. And we're online. So now we've got wired internet out here in the garage. And we can even watch YouTube out here in the garage. So the connection is nice and fast. Now that we know the wireless bridges are working, I've installed the A unit, the head unit, on the house next to the gutter. So it's up underneath the eaves, so it's a little extra protected from weather. So we've got our B unit over there on the garage. I went ahead and set up a router out here in the garage and wired that into our network bridge. So now we can have wired internet or Wi-Fi in the garage. And this is a big improvement. I was never able to get Wi-Fi out here to the garage before. In fact, I can't even get 4G or 5G inside the garage. It's all cement with steel inside. So the garage is kind of a Faraday cage and doesn't get any signals inside of it. So having that wireless bridge, being able to bring ethernet out here to the garage and then run that into a router opens up a whole bunch more possibilities for me. I've got a bunch of projects out here in the garage that could use an internet connection from my laser engraver to 3D printers to satellite antennas to just having streaming music out here or a computer that can look up part numbers or look up information as I'm doing a project. I mentioned earlier in the video that this is a bit of a sneak peek into some future projects here. I've got a few things currently on the roof of the house that I'd like to move over here to the garage. One of my satellite receivers, some of my dishes, some other stuff that really needs to be in a different location. So I'm going to start moving that stuff over to the garage and now that we have reliable internet out here, thanks to that wireless bridge, 
I can connect all that stuff up, get my live satellite images, get live data downloads, have some ham radio stuff, all kinds of new possibilities for new projects. Or I can just watch YouTube videos out here and destroy all my productivity instead of doing actual garage projects. Now to follow up on the Wireless Bridge admin page, I did eventually manage to connect to that. So I had to actually connect with the network cable to the A bridge. I couldn't do it over Wi-Fi. And then modern browsers want to put in your address with an HTTPS, but you actually have to go in and delete that S, just do HTTP colon slash slash and then the IP address, and you can connect to the admin page. I went in and changed all the passwords. That's basically all I wanted to do for now. Just make sure nobody's stealing my Wi-Fi. Now I also had to go out to the garage and connect to the B unit bridge with the wired ethernet cable, make those same changes in the settings, changing the passwords and whatnot so that it would connect to the A bridge. Well, all in all, I would say the UEV wireless bridge system works pretty well, it is pretty straightforward to set up. I had a little bit of trouble getting into that admin page, but once I got that figured out, that was straightforward and easy as well. The system seems to work just as described. The only thing I didn't really test was a long distance transmission. Supposedly this will go up to five kilometers in open air with no obstructions. I don't have any spaces that big that I need to use here in my house, but for going from the house to the garage, it works great. That really overcomes the garage not having any cell phone signal, not having any Wi-Fi signal, and it keeps me from having to run wires out to the garage. So if I want internet out there, now I've got it. If you're interested in getting one of these wireless bridge kits for yourself, I will throw the link down in the video description. Again, this was a sponsored video, but I said I'd try to be very fair and honest with this device, and I really didn't have any issues with it. A little bit of trouble, like I said, getting to the admin page, but that was mostly my fault, trying to take shortcuts like connecting to it wirelessly versus actually going out and plugging the wire in. And then I was a little bit confused by the mounting hardware that was included with it, but I did manage to use all the mounting hardware they supplied, and I didn't need to get any extra mounting hardware. So all the things they supplied, the little screws and the hose clamp, worked perfectly. This seems like a very easy system to set up. If you don't care about the default password, you can just plug everything in, and it pretty much works right away. But I would recommend, for security's sake, to go in there and change those passwords, just so nobody else can look up what you have and look up the default password online. I hope this has been a useful review for everyone. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.